Speak English for Engineering. Tiếng Anh ngành kỹ thuật. 5.1. A race is not just the test of speed, but the ultimate test of reliability. There's an old saying, to finish first, first you must finish. And it's especially true in endurance racing. You're not just competing against rival teams, you're also fighting what you could call engineering enemies, which can cause parts of the car to fail. Things like heat, pressure, vibration, shocks, abrasion. There's continual stress on almost all the components, all the nuts and bolts on the car. The chassis, engine, gearbox and clutch, suspension, brakes, tires, wings, cooling system, they all have to cope with phenomenal levels of wear and tear. 5.2 Just to give you some examples of the types of technical problems we've had so far at this test. On one of the cars, a nut worked loose on a radiator pipe, which resulted in coolant liquid leaking out. That caused the engine to start overheating. Fortunately, the driver saw the warning light come on and he switched off before the system had run out of coolant. Then, on the other car, we had a fuel feed problem. The engine cut out on one of the corners. That caused the driver to spin off. We were fortunate he didn't hit anything. But when the car goes off the circuit, the openings in the side pods always clog up with dirt. So those had to be cleaned out. Obviously, you don't want anything blocking the airflow to the radiators. And then, because of the spin, the rubber was flat-spotted. The tires weren't close to wearing out, but they still had to be changed because of the flat spots. And then, while they were putting the wheels back on after that, they had a wheel nut jam. It wouldn't turn. And that's actually how problems tend to happen. Very often, you get a kind of chain of events when you feel that everything's going against you. Having said that, you could also say we were lucky. Fortunately, the radiator problem didn't cause the engine to blow up. And after the spin, luckily he didn't hit the barriers and bend the suspension or snap it completely. And even more fortunately, it didn't crack the tub, the chassis. 5.3 So, what does the warning message say? When you start the engine, it says, check injection. Right. Obviously, it must be some sort of defect in the fuel injection system. The thing is, though, it only happens intermittently. Sometimes you start it and there's no message at all. So it might be a software problem. I don't know. Or maybe it could be a defective sensor. Is the engine working properly? It seems to be fine, yeah. It doesn't appear to be misfiring or down on power? No, we haven't noticed anything. Presumably it can't be anything too serious. We thought it was possibly water in the fuel system, because it's an outdoor unit. But in that case, I assume there'd be major problems with it. Has it been refueled recently? Not that recently. And was it refueled with diesel stored in your own tank, or directly from a delivery tanker? Uh, from a tanker truck. I doubt it's water, then if the fuel went in directly from a delivery. You said the warning doesn't display systematically. No. In what sort of circumstances does it come up? Well, uh, when you start it up for the first time each day, it comes up. But then if you stop it and start it again a short time after, there's no message. It's when it's been off for a long time that you get the warning. OK. So it's certainly a question of temperature. It only comes up when it's started from cold? Um, yeah, exactly. Hmm. It sounds like it's a faulty fuel preheater. It's probably just one of the preheater plugs that's gone. It's only a minor fault. Oh, right. So it doesn't need urgent attention? No. It can be replaced at the next service. Keep an eye on it, though. If any other problems start to show up, give us a call and we'll send someone over.
5.4 Hello? Hello, Ellen. It's uh, Julia. I've just started a landing gear check and found a bit of a problem with some tires. All the pressures on one of the wing blocks are well down. On the same block? Yeah, on all the other blocks they're correct. So it seems odd that this one group of tires on one corner of the aircraft are all low. And the strange thing is, they're down by exactly the same amount on every tire on the block. I see. You're right, that is unusual. The wear rate's consistent across the whole aircraft, though. There is nothing unusual about the wear pattern. Are you sure the pressure gauge is working properly? Um, well, to be honest, you can tell just by looking at the tires that they're down. Right. Let me come out and have a look. 5.5 OK, let's have a look at the coolant first. Hmm. Oh, the level's OK. It's full of residue, though, by the look of it. Yeah, it looks a bit black, doesn't it? Time to change it, I think. OK. What's the filter like? Um... Uh, ah, it looks reasonable to me. Is it due to be changed? It is if we follow the service programme to the letter. The trouble is, if you do that, you end up wasting parts half of the time. <laughs> we can take it out and give it a bit of a clean. It'll be all right. OK. Blades next. Hmm. Uh, huh. They look more or less OK to me. There are no signs of damage. Yeah. No need to change those. They'll have moved a bit since they were last checked, though. The alignment will need to be looked at. Hmm, sure. Apart from that, it's not looking too bad. Ngoại ngữ chuyên ngành com